Today's lesson is 2.4, Trends for Ionization Energy, Part 2. Trends for ionization energy. So we're going to look at uh, now the ionization energy um, trend with the periodic table. So a neutral atom contains equal number of protons as they do electrons. Okay, so if we're looking at an atom, they're neutral. Same protons, same electrons. However, um, when bonds occur between metals and non-metals, we have what is referred to as this atoms have the ability to gain or even lose electrons. And when they do, they are no longer referred to as atoms, but they are referred to as ions. Atoms that lose electrons become positively charged, and they are called cations. And if you notice here, I use the little T as a plus symbol to kind of be the little trick to help remember that it's uh, positively charged. Uh, on the other hand, we've got atoms that gain electrons and they become negatively charged. And we highlight the, we put emphasis on the N in the term uh, or in the word anions to represent negatively charged ions. So ionization energy uh, is the amount of energy needed to remove an electron off of an atom, an ion, or a molecule. Okay, so it's the amount of energy needed to pull that electron away. So it takes energy to overcome that attractive force in a nucleus to pull an electron away from a neutral atom. Now, depending on where you lie on the periodic table will determine that ionization energy. So alkali metals, okay, group one of the periodic table, they have the low ionization energy level because they are considered extremely reactive and they require very little energy to remove that single valence electron. Remember, when we go back to that radius here, and let me try to erase some of this. Right. Think about this right here. Look at that one valence electron. So sodium in, in a bond, in a, in a, in a um, uh, an ionic bond, it's going to lose that electron very easily. And why does it lose it? Because look at it. It's barely holding on to it because of the repulsion that it's that's occurring. So it requires very little energy. And notice as the radius gets a little bit smaller, Right? The amount of energy required to pull electrons away becomes more and more greater. That's why alkali metals, um, okay, as we said here, alkali metals will have the lowest ionization energy. So if you look here at the very bottom here, alkali metal, alkali metal, alkali metal, notice what has the highest ionization energy, helium, neon, argon. All are noble gases, right? These are noble gases. Okay, so they will have the highest ionization energy uh, in comparison to the alkali metals. So here's the trend. Uh, the trick is this. If you remember the trend for the radius, as I explained earlier, the trend for ionization energy is the exact opposite. So for radius... OK, so for the radius going in this way, it decreases, but the ionization energy increases as we move. And so here we've got the uh, aluminum ladder that separates the metals. Uh, probably have it down here wrong. Um, anyhow, we've got the uh, nonmetals and we've got the metals. And typically metals are the ones that want to um, lose those electrons, right? They're, they're barely holding on to those valence electrons. So they have a tendency to want to uh, lose those electrons to one of the non-metals. As we move down, the ionization energy decreases going down, right? Uh, y radius increases. So it requires less and less energy as we move down to remove that one valence electron that each of the alkaline metals, let's say, in, these, in, in any of these, of these examples, are barely holding on to. 
So ionization energy tends to decrease down a group. So electrons in the outer energy level are farther from the positive force of that nucleus. They're barely holding on to that electron. So these electrons are easier to remove than the electrons found in lower energy levels. Okay. So ionization energy tends to increase across the period. Why? Because we're now moving closer into non-metal um, non um, territory of the periodic table. And non-metals do not want to lose electrons. They, in fact, want to gain those electrons from the metals. So the attraction between the nucleus and the electrons in the outer energy level will increase as we move towards the non-metals. Uh, so this will require more energy to pull an electron away from its atom. Noble gases, as we said before, have the highest ionization energy of all the elements because it is unlikely to have its electrons removed, right? Why is it gonna remove it? So if you wanna remove it, in theory, want to remove um, an electron from a noble gas that has already reached its stable octet, it would require a tremendous amount of energy for it to actually, in fact, take place. I hope you liked this video. If you did, do not be shy to hit that thumbs up button. And while you're clicking the thumbs up, click on that subscribe to stay tuned to my new videos. Thanks for watching.